All right, okay, for this, let's go ahead and let's start fixing his spine bone for when he is aiming his weapon. Uh, there's a really nice little way to do this is we can actually go into the animation itself and do an animation layer, do some keyframes to give a small additive change to the animation and apply it, and that'll actually change the animation within Unreal. So let's track down his animation by going into his anim graph. Let's take a look at the inside the anim graph. Let's take a look at the animation we want to modify, which is this iron sight copy that we retargeted from the other skeleton. The problem that we have is if we actually go into graph and play, he is canting left and right as he's aiming up and down. We want him to be a little bit more straighter. So if we go into graph, let's double click that. We in the animation tab we can actually modify the animations in here. Let's pause this animation. Let's bring it back to zero. And if you notice at the top here, we have a key and apply. So what we need to do is we need to go through each spine and let's take a look at it. Manipulation key there. Let's take a look at the rotation of these spine bones. Now it looks straight, but it's not. This is actually global view, so we need to switch to local view to see what the bone's doing. So the bone's aimed about like uh, 25 degrees or so off to the right, uh, facing the right direction of this character. And if we look at the other ones, they're about the same. So we need to go through and move, make our way up the spine and adjust these with the global position and then take a look at the rotation through the local. So let's switch back to global, let's go back to spine 1, and let's apply a key. So to make sure that we're actually moving in orthographic view or seeing how the, where the weapon's aimed or the spine is positioned, let's go hold down Alt J and let's move this about 20 degrees or so off this way. Let's turn back on local. We're almost straight, so let's keep moving a little bit more. That's about that's pretty good. And let's hit apply. So now that spine bone has an additive animation applied to it. So we'll do the same thing with spine bone two. Take a look at it in local. Let's move it this way to the left. Take a look at it in local. Move it back a little bit more to the right. Let's apply a key. And we shall let's do an apply and let's go to spine bone three and let's get this one to get this weapon to face straight. So we'll rotate this one quite a bit in the world view. So the weapon's relatively facing straight forward. Do a key. Let's take a look at it. Okay, let's apply. And the only way we really know how this is going to look is we're going to have to test it in the animation graph or actually in game. So we scrub through this. We'll see that his animation didn't really change. His spine positioning did, so his upper body is facing more forward, which is if you were are wearing body armor, that's like the better way to do that because then you're torso is more exposed to the gunfire. Anyhow, moving along, let's go back to the graph and let's take a look at this in the animation graph. Let's compile it, let's save it, let's turn on aiming, and let's change the yaw. So it's looking a little bit more straightforward than it was before. It's still a little canted. So let's see if we can adjust that. Oh, okay. I see the animation's popping, so I did something wrong on the animation trying to do this video. Not a problem. Uh, right now the animation is going to look a little bit weird. But we can actually fix that going back to the animation. And as we see him moving, we can look at it from the last frame to the first frame. And we see that he's actually adjusting. So. We can't really copy frames in here, I don't think. Uh, there'd be better, if to do little adjustments like that, it'd be better to do it in a third party program anyways, because you can easily export out these animations just by right clicking and just export FBX, do your adjustments and re-import it. But if we were to test this right now, he should aim a little bit more straightforward than he was before. So he's still kind of canting a little bit, but it wasn't as extreme as it was. This is uh, the camera kind of doing this, so if he's aiming straight, he's doing that. Right now, it's just the animation that's just kind of acting strange. Um, the other thing you may have noticed too is that while I was in the animation graph, in the animations, you may have noticed there's a bunch of animations in here too. What happened was I went through and uh, I ended up retargeting these to test this out, but 
I ended up getting an auto save in there so I'm not able to undo this but I can actually walk you through what I did to do to get all those animations to this character and the cool thing was it didn't make a bunch of copies so there wasn't a bunch of animations just floating around in all these different files so like if I go to mannequin and animation there's not uh, 13 different copies of 13 different animations or a bunch of animations that have copies at the end of them but what we can do is we can go up to the animation starter pack we can go through the UE4 mannequin file, go to the mesh, and there's two things you would need to do to get these animations over to this character. First you would want to go to the pack, you would click the mannequin, you would find the mannequin that the animations in that pack are associated with by looking at, if you hover over this it will bring up a uh, details tab and it will show in the skeleton where the directory of the mannequin that the skeleton is associated with for this animation. Uh, for since it's been changed, it's going to say the one that we're using right now. But assume that this was still this animation pack skeleton. What you would want to do is you would uh, first you can right click on the skeleton. We can do skeleton, assign skeleton, and then you'd find the skeleton that we are using, which is not the starter pack, but it's actually the mannequin that we're using for the third person blueprint. Hit accept. It'll say you need to save out this mannequin for those changes to be applied. We'll also need to do one more thing before we do that. Once we change, once we retarget this skeleton to actually inherit our character, all those animations that are in this pack or any other animations from other characters that you made a copy of skeletons for will move over to this character. Uh, so if we to retarget to another skeleton, uh, it'll close down the anim blueprints and stuff if we do this. It'll bring up any skeletons that it can it can find that has a relevant or relatively close resemblance to. And if you just select that, you'll see a whole bunch of animations just saving and doing changes to. And really, what it's doing is it's it, the animations are now reading this skeleton as usable on here. Um, if you didn't want to use the original skeleton that was in this pack. You can easily just go over to this skeletal mesh. You can create another skeleton for it. Do, 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 up skeleton, create a skeleton. Rename the skeleton to whatever you want. So that way you're always having the original in here if you so choose. So I'm going to delete that because I don't need it. And I'm going to save this out for now. So we have all our animations that are retargeted to our character and they are ready to be used. Uh, where are we at on time? No, about seven minutes. Uh, well, I can do a little bit of discussing really quickly on another method that was probably more commonly known and a lot more people used. I know I did it when I first started working on my first third person character for proxy was I ended up using animation blend shapes, well, blend spaces for aim offsets. Um, so one of the ways you want to do for aim offsets is we can go into our mannequin, let's find our animation folder and let's create oh by the way all those animations you retargeted will stay up in those folders um, so they won't be moved down here but that skeleton can still access them access and use those so we created aim offset we can go to animation right click go down to animation and add an aim offset 1D uh, I'm doing 1D right now because this is for straightforward pitch aim up and down I'm not doing anything left to right yet, just yet or any other crazy degrees because that would be better for a secondary stage where if the character is not aiming the weapon they can go into like a weapon ready state where like their weapon is down low ready they're walking around and the character they can still have the camera locked to the back so it'll still manipulate the character's upper body to his lower positions of his legs um, sounds kinda crazy but eventually I'll get to that um, so we can actually say the skeleton we want to use is the mannequin that we're working on. Uh, we'll call this one a rifle AO for aim offsets. Uh, and it doesn't have anything in it. So first thing we need to do is I like to work on this with the editor vertically up and down. So we can go over to the details panel, check that box that says display editor vertically. It'll change it to up and down. And we need to give this a range of limitation in which that we are going to be moving for pitch. So we can change the range to uh, the minimum of negative 90 with a maximum of 90 degrees. 
like we've already done with the spine bone. Our label is going to be a float, so we're going to give this a float name of pitch. And four axis divisions is fine. So once that happens, you need to hit apply parameter changes or else if, this, if you close this down, none of this will save. Once you hit that, they will be relabeled to pitch and you will now have your graph to work with for aim offsets. Cool thing is, is well, kind of not really cool thing, but anyways, we don't have any animations for aim offsets. We don't have a center, we don't have an up, we don't have a down. Uh, example of what I'm talking about is if you go to the animations of which it were retargeted, we have something called an aim space iron sights. This is doing a 4D motion of aim offsets for a weapon. Well, the only animations we're going to be using is this first one all the way up and all the way down. So at the first 20 frames of this stuff of the uh, this animation we're going to use. We're going to create some animations within Unreal using those different poses. Um, so let's grab the first one which is going to be our aim offset center space. Aim offsets need about like three poses to blend between for I guess to properly work um, from what I've played with. Uh, so what we can do is we can first say let's use this and I want to create an animation off of it. So if you come over to the skeleton, we can hit this record button. Oh, never mind. <laughs> In the animation tab it's there, it just wasn't lit up, I overlooked it. Apologies. You can hit this record button and what that'll do is it'll say, oh, we're making a new animation. Where would you like to save this animation? Well, let's just add it into our mannequin folder where all our animations are stored right now. And I'm going to call this one rifle aim offset center center. Once I hit OK, it's going to start recording. It's telling you how much time is going on. This is way too much time, but let's say we're done. We don't need to do this anymore. We can click there to stop it it'll tell you how many frames have been saved out. So 225 frames with this guy not moving. So that's a lot of wasted space. But let's get the rest of these animations recorded real, real quickly and then we'll move over to our animations we just got done making and fix those. So we can scrub through the bar, use a scrub bar, and let's find the most extreme pose which is totally up 90 degrees. Let's make a new animation. Let's call this one rifle aim offset center up. I'm going to hit OK and I'm going to stop because I don't need it to be a whole bunch of frames and let's find the most extreme that goes downwards about 90 down. Do that one more time. Rifle aim offset center down. Also you can hit a stop button up here too. It does the same thing but that's just a, just a little bit more convenient to reach that right there. So now where do we find our animations? Well we can go into the content browser and there's now three new animations that we made. If we click, double click on this we'll see that our animation will play. Nothing's happening because this is what we recorded. Uh, interestingly enough is you can actually use montages or animation composites. You can put a whole bunch of these animations in sequences and you can record that out as like an action sequence and it'll actually make an entirely new animation which you can then export out to a third party application, do edits to, or anything else you need to. So it's a great way of making some new animations without ever having to make something from scratch. Uh, so we don't need all this additional frames because it's just wasted space for us. So what we can do is we can right click and we can remove frame Two to two two five. Mm, well, let's just get rid of all that. But we still have two more frames, which I don't really need. So I click, right click that again. Remove frame one to two. Now we have one frame. That's just this guy in this pose. So let's do that to the other two. All the way over. Remove frame one to twenty three. And last one. Remove frame one to thirty. Now that's complete. We can go back to our rifle AO, our rifle aim offset and I want to start bringing my blend space positions into this character so we can look up and down. However, if I try that now, it won't work because we need to set our, our uh, poses up to use blend shapes. So let's double click on our animation and let's, these are the settings you would want to change these to. So in the additive settings, 
This is going to allow to use blend shapes. We need to do it in a mesh space. Let's use a selected animation frame. And with the animation we want to use it for, let's use the, uh, what is it called? Rifle Idle Iron Sights. I'm going to copy this search so that way I don't have to type it again. And there's our iron sights that we want to use. We can select the pose frame that we want, which is going to be frame zero since he's looking forward. Let's go down to our center down. Let's do the same thing again. Whoops. Select the animation frame. Let's find that animation. Let's change the frame that we want to use. It's a very tiny little window to see, but I mean, we could try to resize it, but it's going to fight with me right now, which I'm not going to mess with. So let's I'm going to zoom in just a little bit and navigate around to see what frame is the most extreme on. I believe it was 10, so if you want to scrub through this, you can. Or you can use up and down if you were using another animation that had different pose positions. But we're only going to be using it for an animation where he's like holding a weapon still, so this is the animation we want to use. Um, that was an earlier example I was thinking of that I tried it on. It didn't really work, so... Let's go into our last animation and let's change the additive settings to mesh space. Select the animation frame. Let's search for the animation one more time. And now we have our animation. So if we go back to animation offset, we can now drag in our new animation offsets that we use. We don't see anything yet. Let's drag in center down. So he's almost there. He's kind of working. And center up. So now he's looking up and down, but he's not doing what we want. Well, we need an animation preview base pose to base this on. So let's find that idle animation again. And now he's starting to look up and down, and I want to see him animating though. So let's select. The, let's just select a random animation. Let's switch play. Let's go back to the aim offsets, and now we can see him that he's aiming up and down. So I'm going to stop this video here. I'm going to go a little bit more in depth with using these blend shapes a bit more in the next video. Um, because as you can see there, he's having a little bit of trouble with his hand moving up and down and separating because of additional blend spaces that might be needed, but I'll save that for another video. So I'll see you guys in the next one then.